Welcome back at the Technical Forum here at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are here at Hanover Fair 2016. This will be our last presentation for this day, so I welcome you here to have a seat, enjoy, have a drink, and enjoy the last um, presentation here. So the topic will be new aspects for bipolar plates and gaskets for fuel cells and redox flow batteries. For that, we'll hear the project manager for fuel cells and batteries of the Eisenhut GmbH. So please welcome with me on stage Dr. Ruven Henkel. Big hands, please. Okay. Okay. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to my talk, um, New Aspects for Bipolar Plates and Gaskets for Redox Flow and Fuel Cells. First, a few words to our company. Um, Eisenhut is split in three main divisions. First is uh, the mold building for injection molding. The second is um, the injection molding itself, where we uh, produce um, plastic parts and rubber parts. <coughs> and third division is the fuel cell components, where we produce the bipolar plates and the gaskets for the bipolar plates. And um, it's from the quantity one, perhaps it is important for you. Um, the supply chain at Eisenhut starts at the construction of the parts of the molds of the gaskets with 3D programs. Um, second, there is uh, the machining of the steel for the molds. And a third part, or the third um, part yeah, of the production chain is um, the production of the parts via um, compression molding or injection molding. Um, supply chain number two is a special supply chain for um, the bipolar plates. And um, it starts at the compounding. So we take the raw material, put it in an extruder, and compound the material. After a few more production steps, we come to the processing of the bipolar plates via, um, hot <coughs> via compression molding or injection molding. In the next step, we or then we get these uh, raw bipolar plates. And um, if we know the end dimensions or the end form of the, of the bipolar plates, with a, we can machine these raw plates to the ready-made plate in the end. This is a plate for a bio biological fuel cell. I will tell a bit a more about later. Um, what materials the bipolar plates are made of. Um, first one is a thermoplastic binder material. Normally, we use PPS, PTFE, or uh, oh, PVDF, <laughs> or polypropylene, um, and we fill it with a conducting, yeah, filler, and um, this could be, in this example, it's a titanium powder for, uh, oh, um, electrolysis perhaps, or here this is a compound in the end, but here the filler is uh, graphite. Um, yeah, what are the big challenges? Okay, one thing is to have a good conductivity, you have to fill the material with many, <laughs> uh, with much filling material. And um, so if you got more filler, more graphite or more titanium powder, you got more conductivity. But on the other hand, you got um, lower mechanical stability because um, the more it gets more like the powder, um, the properties get more like the powder, li uh, like the graphite or uh, the titanium. Another thing is um, the particle size. If the particle size increases, we got a better processability because the viscosity of uh, the melt is lower, but on the other hand, the homogene homogeneity decreases. Another thing, oh, yeah. <laughs> So you can say compromises are needed in this compounding, but so far we are in the limits of uh, physics and chemistry. We can produce custom-made materials for your use or your application. Um, another thing is that there are no standard processes. These are two uh, examples of graphite. 
Okay, it's not so good to see. Here, this graphite has a large dispersity, so bigger particles, very much small particles. Here are just these bigger particles. And uh, this leads to a change in the viscosity of the melt, so we have to use uh, other parameters for the processing and the extruding or injection molding and so on. Um, another thing is that the thermoplastic binder also has similar influences on the processing, so every time the processing has to change, um, and it depends on which material we are working on. Quality issues are very important for us at Eisenhut. Um, we can measure for the through plane and the in plane conductivity of the plates, also the permeability, the dimensions, of course, this is easy, um, surface, roughness. Another thing which will come is um, that we will measure the mechanical properties, and uh, with our partners, we also can measure chemical resistivity or thermal properties of the materials. Because quality issues are so important for us, we are in a research project named Qualifix. And um, this is a project which deals with, uh, yeah, to find out quality aspects in the production over the whole supply chain by producing uh, fuel cells. Our part here is that we ha take a detailed look on the influence of the graphite on the uh, properties of the plates. And ah, yeah. so we took these uh, PPS thermoplast, which is for high temperature application, and um, changed the particle size of the, of the graphite. And also, here in the last um, step, we changed the amount of the graphite, of the big particle graphite. And what we see is that if you change the, the particle size from small to big, the, um, the, uh, the resistivities decrease. And also, it decreases if you have five weight percent more of the, of the bigger graphite. So um, you can see that um, the particle size has also, it has an influence on the, on the, on the parameters for by-processing, but also on the uh, properties of the finished plate. Um, we also measured uh, the mechanical properties. Here you can see um, between the standard deviation, it's nearly all the same. The only or the main change we, we saw was uh, the impact resistance of the plates with the small particles was a bit lower, and of course the roughness of the plates with five percent um, lower, which were filled five percent lower than the others, uh, which was much better. And this is just because you got more thermoplastic binder, so the the surface is much flatter. Um, the gaskets, for what are the gaskets? Uh, first, they should seal the cell, they should uh, take the mechanical load, um, and they should compensate the tolerances in the bipolar plates. Normally, we use three materials, EPDM, silicon rubber, or FKM. They all have advantage, disadvantages. Um, I don't want to talk in detail about this. What for us is important is uh, that we want to know the material properties in processing. This is very important. Um, so we built a mold. This is a spiral. And we injection mold the material, get something like this. And we can measure how far it, the material uh, go in, in, the, in, the, in the mold so that we can measure the length. And we see, OK, for most things, um, this Silicon rubber is good for processing. This EPDM is not so good for the processing. So it's just to to yeah to look before you start with 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 works with the works. You can see how good the material could be processed. Um, the gas processing we got two uh, ways for it. First is um, we make. Um, uh, a green body via compression molding, and then we cut the gasket details 
uh, with a laser out of, out of the green body. Another thing is uh, what we are doing at Eisenhut. We can take the plate, the bipolar plate, and injection mold the gaskets around the bipolar plate. Um, also here we can test um, the, the, the sealing or how good the, the, the gasket seals uh, the cell. This is a home-built device we use for this, and uh, this is, works very good. Um, another research project we are working in is um, the project Biological Fuel Cell. There we have um, microorganisms which um, creates <laughs> the hydrogen, which can be used um, for, for getting the, the current. Um, and it is used, or it should be used in a wastewater treatment plant to create or generate uh, electricity. We at Eisenhut um, have the task to, to design the cells and to produce your bipolar plates. And just a few words about this. We started with this. This was the first generation, a single cell um, design. Then in the second generation, we improved the sealing and um, the stacking ability of, 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 of the cell. And now, in the third generation, we are back again in the single cell um, design. But now we have a larger surface uh, with a, for a better performance. And if you're interested in this biological fuel cell, you can see a working demo model at the IFAD uh, 2016 in Munich. Um, another research project is uh, the NeoHygen project, where we yeah, make titanium-filled compounds for electrolyzers, for PEM electrolyzers, um, with our partner here at Schwerin. Here you can see um, this is a directly molded, compression molded uh, plate out of this compound. Um, and the way here was we went, started with these small 25 square centimeters plates to a 69 square, square centimeter uh, short stack. And um, our partner uh, performed some, some tests with this material. Here you can see um, uh, a characteristic, characteristic line of, of the, of the um, yeah, short stacks. Um, OK. Another one is this. You can see it's the cell voltage with the hours I'm working increases. This is because uh, of some um, degeneration of the bipolar plate, but in, we are now having material which didn't show this effect. So in the future, it could be that this material also can be used for uh, electrolyzers. Mm. OK. Ah. OK, and what are the current trends? Um, one important thing for us at Eisenhut is uh, and we are working on new material for high temperature PEM fuel cells, which has uh, 10 times lower uh, resistivity than the state-of-the-art material PPS. Um, we're working on the electrolysis materials. We're working on the upscaling in redox flow applications. Where the main aims we have are uh, better processing of the material, improved properties of the plates, and of course, lower costs for the user. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much also from my side. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? All questions that you have that you can take to the booth. The booth is located at D56 slash 1. Once again, D56 slash 1. Um, thank you very much once again. That was uh, the Eisenhut GmbH with Dr. Ruven Henkel. This was already our last presentation here at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2016. Thank you very much. We'll start tomorrow morning here again in the Technical Forum at 10 o'clock. <laughs>